Hey, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. It's a nice, rainy, cool day today in Long Island, New York. It's just wonderful to work outside. Today, I have a brand new in the box Predator 212cc, 6.5 horsepower, horizontal shaft engine from Harbor Freight Tools. Usually, this engine's $129.99, but if you have a coupon, which I always do, the reason why I always have a coupon is because I, I have that uh, Harbor Freight app. Just go to your uh, Google Play Store or the uh, iTunes, whatever, um, the Apple Store, and look at your apps, right? And just type in Harbor Freight Tools. There's like a, two or three of them, but uh, there's one that says 20% as the icon. That one's a good one where it has all the coupons you need for the best value over at Harbor Freight Tools. Remember, always get your free gift, too. There's a coupon where you can get a free flashlight or free multimeter or a tarp. They have all kinds of uh, different choices you can have, but just pick the one you want. You know, you're only allowed one per uh, visit. Anyway, so I needed this for a uh, tamper uh, plate compactor, um, the Casa Multi-Quip, um, the Honda uh, GX160 uh, horizontal shaft engine smokes a lot. Um, oil seeps through the rings and piston, so that's what causes all the smoke. So uh, the cylinder wall is out of spec and it has a wobbly piston. So we have to get rid of that engine and we're going to put this engine on. Um, after I put it on, I'm going to show you guys how to uh, break it in. The break-in period varies between certain people, but honestly, all you need to do is run it for about a half an hour at low idle, middle, and high throttle for periods of time, you know? After you uh, run it for that period of time, you do another oil change, and then uh, you get all the metal flakes and, and, and shavings out of that oil, you know, because when it's brand new, you're going to have a little bit of wear on the uh, brand new parts that are in there, you know? So you just want to get the metal shavings out of there. Now, there's been some kind of discrepancy in terms of... Uh, what kind of oil do you use to put in there? Uh, I've seen the forums and stuff, and it always says to put uh, 10W30 in there. I've seen people who say 5W30, and honestly, in my opinion, if the engine's being used above 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which you're thinking you know, is probably like fall or summer use, right? I would put the SAE30. But if you're using this engine for both environments, such as below freezing as well as above freezing, right? Then 5W30 should do it, and if not, 10W30 should do it, you know? I wouldn't put 10W40 because 10W40 is mostly for vehicles, you know? Um, smaller engines require a little bit more thickness to it. Um, so I'm gonna, I, um, I'm gonna put in some 5W30 just to break it in, right? Conventional 5W30. And then after I run it for about a half an hour, <clears throat> I'm going to put some good stuff, really good stuff. This is uh, 5W30 Synthetic from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Synthetic oil is a little bit more expensive than conventional oil, but because of the technology and the chemistry, right, the synthetic is always more expensive. It uh, adheres to the parts a little better. It's a little bit more stickier than conventional motor oil. So I'm going to do an unboxing. You're going to see exactly what a brand new engine uh, looks like coming right out of the box. And then um, I'm going to do a quick oil change for the 5W30 uh, conventional. And then once we run it for a period of time, I'm going to put some, uh, I'm going to do another oil change. I'm going to put some 5W30 in. I'm going to open the box now. Predator 212cc, 6.5 horsepower engine from Harbor Freight Tools. With the coupon, it was um, $99 plus tax. First thing you see is an instruction manual. Can I read the instructions? Nah! What about the instructions? Huh. 
Uh, I'm assuming this is the spark plug tool. How to put a spark plug in, right? Because it looks like that's what it is. Of course, this doesn't make it easier because it's cold out. My fingers are absolutely freezing. It looks like it's a spark plug tool. Real good quality spark plug tool. Hey, whatever gets the spark plug out, right? Styrofoam insulation. Ooh, nice. Wrap nicely. I'm gonna pull it out. Oh my back! Oh my god! Oh my god! Just kidding. Bend your knees! Oh! Bottom is just some more star foam. Star foam back in the box, just so I don't step on it and it creates a mess. Instructions go in here in case I run into a problem and I gotta read the instructions. But basically, uh, my friend Jason Pate of Pate's Performance, he's been buying these things for years. I don't know how many he's done, but he's done a lot. Um, he puts these engines, usually the Hemi version of it, uh, onto his snowblowers. Whenever he gets a snowblower that needs a better engine, he puts he buys these all the time. And I went to see him the other day on the way home from driving my daughter somewhere, because he lives just five blocks away. Uh, he told me that the break-in period is that you put oil in it. it there's, there's very little oil that comes shipped with it. So uh, when I fill it up with oil... Um, probably 5W30, even though, you know, um, for the summer you put in SAE30, but this machine is probably going to be run in all seasons, you know, cold and hot, so 5W30 would be good for it. I'm going to use regular 5W30 uh, to break this in, and uh, you run it for about 30 minutes. Now, do I run it 30 minutes on idle? or full throttle 30 minutes. I guess we'll find out. So, the Honda engine that it came out of is a non-tapered three-quarter uh, shaft. If this is tapered, I'm screwed. And it is not tapered. This is going to be a direct replacement. It's got the keyway already on there. No important things in there. Just, just a protective uh, cardboard. Ooh, candy! Look, they give you candy. I'm kidding, it's not candy. Don't eat it. All right, so let me get the camera so you guys can see all angles of this. See that okay? okay? Before use, fill gas here. Add fuel stabilizer. Add engine Earl below. They spelled Earl wrong. It should be E A R L. They got some kind of crazy word like oil here. I don't know what that means. So, uh, as you know, you fill it to the thread. See? Dipstick. Dipstick? Cletus, you dipstick! Cletus, you know what you are. You're a dipstick. A 14 carat dipstick. Operating with low oil or no oil causes permanent damage and voids your warranty. Warranty. Like they honor the warranties. That's what it looks like. Crank seal. Oil dipstick here, oil dipstick there. Look, there's some Earl in there. I've seen another video where it, it was it looked more like uh, just five ounces of Earl. These look like identical dipsticks. 
Oh, okay. This is uh, this has no dipstick. It's just a just a cap. Or I guess you could fill. If it was inconvenient to fill on one side, you can fill it on this side. But to check the Earl, it's this one here. Let's go over here. Okay, so look. This is the on and off switch, identical location to the Honda one. This is the um, low oil sensor, right? And that tells you, it shuts off the engine when it senses that it's low oil. So a lot of times, right, uh, where people would try to start the engine and it would run for a second and shut off, well, the natural instinct is to think that, oh man, my carburetor needs cleaning because, you know, it, it's only running on choke or it only runs for a little while and the fuel is not being delivered right. Well, it could be the oil sensor that's just sensing you don't, you have low oil or it's a faulty one. So basically to disconnect it, right, if you wanted to bypass the oil sensor, and, and listen, I, I'm not an expert, I just learned this myself, right, you always have a yellow and a black wire coming out of the oil sensor. If you trace this black wire and disconnect it, that's it. It'll run, it'll be off a kill, and it, uh, whether you have oil in it or not, it'll run, you know. So, uh, but it's always, you know, you want, you need this, right? But if it's a faulty one, you can disconnect it and bypass it by taking the black wire off, okay? Um, recoil starter is attached to this uh, placard. Quick start guide. Fuel cap, muffler, air filter, oil fill cap, oil drain plug, over here. Use your throttle, your engine switch, your starter handle, your stroke, and your fuel valve. So um, this is supposed to be just ready to go. You just got to add oil and gas into it. It should run like a dream. You know, it's plug and play pretty much, you know. This gives you some uh, information over here. Mount the engine in a secure place. The starting procedure, close choke. Open the valve, it's got a fuel shutoff, right? Just like the Honda. I mean, this is a, an exact clone, pretty much, you know? So it should be plug and play uh, of a GX160 Honda. <laughs> Throttle adjustment, the usual uh, rabbit and turtle, and if you don't know what that means, then you shouldn't be watching this video. Switch on, right? Uh, pull start, choke to run. So, you know, very basic. Mucho basic. You guys like my Spanish, huh? You good? It's identical to a GX160. It looks exactly the same. Overhead valve, carburetor. By the way, the carburetors, uh, the clone carburetors for Hondas, I mean, they're so good and so close, right, that I have put a clone, I have put a clone Honda carburetor onto a Honda engine with absolutely no problems. I have put a real Honda carburetor on a cloned Chinese engine, no problems. So they're interchangeable. Um, poor Honda, nobody's going to buy your expensive parts. They're all going to buy the, the cheap Chinese copies. So here's that thing again. So um, fuel shut off. Now, okay, they do have, I was just going to yell at them and say, you don't have any instructions on this. This is off or is that off? You know, but it has right here. Off, on, right? Choke. To start it, you got the choke. To run, oh, it's a nice, nice crisp switch. Throttle, rabbit, turtle. Cool. Um, breather hose from the gas tank. Gas tank. Again, now the Honda ones have a lanyard attached to it with a mesh filter, if you will. Uh -huh. Lanyard and a mesh filter. Exactly the same. Except I think the Honda one, the lanyard is attached to the filter. This is attached to actually has like a ring around it that clips into this um, reservoir. So I'm not going to put anything in it now. I'm going to mount the engine first. By the way, there's the oil drain hole there. Did you guys get a good enough look? There's the bottom. 
Oh, I hope this bolt pattern fits. We're going to find out right now. Okay, now I'm going to see if it fits. First, I'm going to look at the way this is going here. The pulley's here, so the pulley was sticking out there. So the crankshaft, uh, crankshaft had to be pointed that way. Okay? like a kitten. This is idle. So I think I'm just gonna let it run for until it runs out of gas. Uh, maybe run it for a half an hour or so. It's the break-in period and then do another oil change on it. Seems to run really well. put that cage on yet. I'm gonna put it on. So that's it. Been running for about a half an hour. Uh, I'm gonna go watch some football now. Cleaned up. And I'll do an old change tomorrow. I'll run a little bit more tomorrow. I'll do an old change on it. So far so good man.
running uh, very well, uh, half hour, 45 minutes or so. So I'm going to shut it off shortly, and then I'm going to uh, use the drain plug this time. Uh, sometimes I just tilt it where you fill the oil, that, that dipstick area. But they actually have a drain plug. It's very tiny hole. Dipstick reservoir. We got the little drain plug right over here. See how close it is to this thing? Well, if you took this drain plug out, all the oil is just going to spill out all over the place. You know, cause a mess. While it has two dipstick reservoirs, it also has another drain plug on the other side too. However, where it's located, it's very difficult to drain the oil from that area. That'll definitely cause a big mess. It's running very smoothly on idle. great. So it's been running for about an hour. I'm going to shut it off now. So uh, I tried to use like a plastic uh, lid or something, right, and stuff it under here so that it will come out and uh, not make a mess. But um, it has a tendency to go upwards. So I know that if I took this nut off, right, it would leak all over here. So I think the best way to do it is to simply open the dipstick reservoir. And I've got like this plastic tube. It's about the same diameter as this, or I thought it was. At least it fit on the Honda, this one that doesn't fit. I have to find some kind of a tube, and I'll just tilt it, you know, this way a little bit, just to get the uh, majority of the earl out. All right, see what I did there? So I've got a uh, takeout container over there, right? And then I have this uh, thicker hose, not like a fuel line, but I don't know where I got it from, but the hose fits okay in the hole. There might be some gaps, but I think most of the earl will come out. So I'm just going to tilt it a little bit. And there we go. Yep, there's some dripping from the uh, area, but it's okay. As long as I'm catching it, you know. not worried about anything going into this muffler because well this is a brand new engine and I've already poured out all the Earl
and you know I'm not going nuts I'm not gonna take out every little last drop of it you know what I'm saying still gonna be some residue in there but the majority of the oil 98% of it is out of there so we're gonna inspect this Earl a little bit we're gonna expect to see some metal shavings and fibers in there They're so minuscule, but you can kind of see it. There's some glistening of metal shavings in there. So apparently that's normal. Oil's relatively clean, you know. It's clear. Looks dark in volume, right? But if you look at it on your fingers and stuff, it's clear, you know. So we're just getting the metal shavings out of here. And this is conventional 5W30, so I'm going to put in that synthetic now. You can kind of see it, you know, if you stir it around. Little white specks, right? The really silver specks of metal. Very light shavings. This is all expected from the break-in period, you know. So you just wanted to get all the specks off of the new parts in there. And uh, we coat it again now with um, a little stickier Earl. So that's why I'm using the synthetic. You guys can use whatever you want, you know, but um, always use either 5W30, SAE30, or 10W30. Um, it, I didn't see anybody say that 10W40 is good for it, but honestly, it's oil, you know what I'm saying? It'll be fine. As long as you don't run it till black tar color, you know what I'm saying, and then you'll blow your engine. As long as your oil is clear, right, it's an indication that the engine's running just fine without, without any problems. All it is, it was a just a thicker fuel hose, is what it was. It fit in there pretty good. So now I'm going to uh, get the SA, uh, get the uh, synthetic oil ready with a funnel. And like I always say, whenever I do an oil change, I always give you guys a reminder: don't be a dick. Dispose of your Earl properly. Don't dump it in a sewer or anything. Oops. Get some in the hole. Don't dump it in the sewer or a lake or your backyard or the forest or anything like that. It's going to make its way to human consumption somehow. It's going to cause cancer to somebody. And you're going to cause somebody to die. Next time you go to the gas station, you give them a couple of jugs of used oil. If they refuse to take it, you call the EPA and say, This gas station is refusing to take my used oil. Say to them, well, would you rather I dump it into an ocean or something? Gas station's like, yeah, what do I care? Go ahead, do it. No, don't do that. So, since my funnel is like that, you really need a long kind of funnel, you know? This is very difficult. So, I'm going to use the same hose that I just used before. No, no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. That kind of works. That kind of... No, that's going to make a mess. Man. Difficult. I guess that kind of works. Okay. Five W thirty synthetic from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. I think it takes uh, half a quart, right? But I'm just gonna pour in like a third of a quart and uh, check the levels once in a while. It just has to come up to the threads where the dipstick goes into, and you can see it pretty clearly where the oil level is. So 
So I'm pouring just about what came out of it, which is, it looked like probably half the work. As you can see, the notice the color of the Earl. When uh, I drained it, it was dark, almost with a greenish hue, right? And as you can see, this, this is uh, beige, yellowish, clear. I had already used a uh, half cord of this thing on something else, I don't remember. It's about half. I think I might have overfilled it a little. A little. See, it's coming out still. Tilt it a little bit and pour it back out, you know? Or like they say in uh, Canada, pour it back. Oh! Oh, by the way, guys, I'm going to go to Canada again this December for Christmas. I'm just tilting it a little bit just to get a little bit more out. That's good. This is sort of on an incline, so that's pretty accurate. Not exactly the cleanest procedure, you know? There's gotta be an easier way to do an oil change because it's always so messy and so difficult. I mean, if it was just like a an easy way to do it, you know? Like I've had some lawn tractors in the past where some people would put some uh, pi piping, you know? Some plumbing piping on there, the little metal valve. And basically it's like a elbow that goes down like this and all you gotta do is Turn the valve, oil comes out, tighten the valve, done. That is ideal. How much could that cost to do that? To make a metal elbow come out like this, pointed downwards with a little shutoff valve. You know, why can't you just make that? That can't cost a lot of money, you know? It would make doing oil changes way quicker. Oh, think about that. If you made it too easy to do an oil change, right? You'll do it often and according to your periods of time that you have to do it, right? According to schedule. If you made it difficult like this, you're not going to want to do it because you make it so difficult to do all changes. So then you don't do it or you're less likely to do it often, right? So then your engine blows and you got to go out and buy more engines, see? That's the manufacturer's purpose of... Uh, Making it difficult is that you make it so hard you don't want to do it, and when you don't do it, your engine blows. So now you got to go out and spend some more money and buy more of their engines. That's how they make more money. Yep, I've decided that that's that's the that's the reason why. So there it is, purring like a kitten on idle. Just very smooth. I'm uh, I have to say I'm pretty impressed with the uh, Predator engine. I haven't had too much experience with it. I had one vertical one on a uh, push mower, and it seemed to run just fine. But my uh, personal experience now with uh, installing a brand new horizontal shaft onto this tamper, every time, one pull, you know, very impressive. And at $99, how do you go wrong, you know? We've repowered this uh, $1,000 piece of equipment with a $100 engine. I mean, that's the lifeblood of this, um, you know, machine. So we've uh, broken it in, gotten the metal shavings and uh, bits out of the uh, engine. It's got synthetic 5W30 motor oil in it. This is good now. Good to go. So 
thanks very much for joining me on the unboxing of the Predator 212 CC overhead valve gas engine, 6.5 horsepower that I got from Harbor Freight Tools with a coupon for $99 plus tax. Now this machine's ready to go. And I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Boats. Hey guys, support my channel via sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on the next part. Have a great day. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.